Hi everyone, it's Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners. Welcome back to Fez Investigates. This episode we're talking about Verge and how they were hacked not once but twice using the same exploit. I'm going to try and explain everything in a really quick and easy fashion that everybody can understand. Talking about how all the elements used within the network came together for the hackers to be able to steal millions of dollars worth of tokens. If this video does go on a little bit too long, we will include timestamps below so that you can just jump ahead if you don't want to sit and watch the whole thing. Verge is a privacy coin. It runs its own public blockchain and focuses solely on keeping transaction data anonymous. They recently released Wraith Protocol and this allows a user to turn on or off the anonymity function for transaction data. It has a total supply of 16.5 billion and the Verge network aims to add blocks once every 30 seconds. This again will be important and I will explain why later in the video. Now Verge source code is completely open source so anybody can go check out the code I actively encourage it so go check out the Verge GitHub okay so this is where things start to get a little bit complex we're going to start with the fact that Verge set a target of adding one block to the blockchain every 30 seconds now this will change as mining gets easier blocks will be added quicker and as mining becomes more difficult it will take longer for that block to be mined so the time will take longer and the difficulty algorithm is constantly changing to try and keep this in balance each block contains a timestamp of when it was mined now Verge allow a two hour window of error to allow for different time frames and different computers on the network. Another important fact is that Verge actually make use of five different mining algorithms instead of just one, like other cryptocurrencies, and they do this in an attempt to aid decentralization. This means that all forms of hardware, whether it's CPUs, GPUs, or ASIC miners, can be used to mine the cryptocurrency, and it attempts to prevent the centralization caused by ASIC miners, for example, Bitcoin. How they keep the difficulty changing and trying to keep it in balance is by using a difficulty adjustment algorithm that's called dark gravity wave algorithm. Now this is a weighted average of all the times that the blocks were added to the blockchain. And this again looks over a two hour window. So if a lot of blocks are being confirmed that have bigger difference to the timestamp to what's actually being kept, then this would mean the difficulty is too high and the difficulty would be reduced to allow for faster block times. Okay, now we're gonna jump over to the recent hack. So on April 4th to April 6th, Verge was attacked with a 51% attack. Now, a 51% attack is usually associated with double spend attacks. Now, a 51% attack is just where hackers gain control of the network. Usually, they would use this control to double spend coins. But the important thing is, just because you can double spend doesn't mean you necessarily have to. And although this was a 51% attack, it was done slightly different in where they flooded the network with incorrect timestamps from an hour previous. And this meant that dark gravity wave algorithm was reading timestamps from an hour ago this led it to believe that the mining difficulty was set too high so it reduced that difficulty from as high as 300,000 to as low as 0.0002 which is a huge decrease now as I've referred to it as a 51% attack it's actually important to realize that this attack was carried out with as little as 0.4 of the entire hash rate of the network they did this by making use of one algorithm and the algorithm that they used in this case was script and there's a lot of economic factors that made script the cheapest algorithm to take control of now because the difficulty was reduced to such a low number this enabled them to add blocks to the blockchain a lot faster than usual and they managed to create 1560 verge tokens per second and this resulted in a hack worth over a million dollars so now if we jump over to the most recent attack which was on the 21st of May 2018 Verge initially tweeted out that they were under DDoS attack now the difference is a denial of service attack is usually flooding the network with spam or huge amounts of information to bring it to a standstill now whilst this is what the hackers did they had a specific purpose they flooded it with timestamps to take control of the network so that they could mine and prevent other people from mining the tokens the main difference between the two hacks were that in the the second attempt rather than just using one algorithm 
they made use of two algorithms instead. Other than that, it was executed in exactly the same way. But this time it resulted in 35 million Verge tokens being stolen for an estimated $1.8 million. Okay, so you might be asking, how did they manage to do this after the first attack? Well, the truth of it is that nobody did anything to fix the exploit within the code. There was a change made to the code after the attack. However, this had no real world effect on the difficulty it was to take control over the network. Since this second attack, code has been changed and this is what we're going to talk about now. Justin Vendetta added some new code to the GitHub on the 25th of May and this effectively reduced the window of error from two hours to 10 minutes. Now there's a lot of people on Reddit and within the Verge community saying although this makes a similar attack very difficult it does not prevent the attack from happening again. There's also a lot of rumors that the code that's been implemented into Verge has actually come from another cryptocurrency, namely Shield. Now, Justin Vendetta denies all knowledge of this on the Discord chat and actually accuses Shield of copying directly from Verge. And I've got a little screen grab here. Obviously, you're not going to be able to read it, but if you get onto the Discord channel, you will be able to find this for yourselves. Okay, so some of the factors that lead me to believe that the rumors are true is the fact that if you compare the timestamp of the dates of the code being added, there's a 55-day difference in favor of the shield developer. Now, to see if it is exactly the same, I put both bits of code into a plagiarism checker and the results were that the code is identical. So, that's his final thoughts. Ultimately, I tend to be more of a day trader than a long-term holder, so it doesn't affect me. I, I trade fluctuations in price. This will, however, affect Verge in the long term, or it should do. Institutional money should be coming in soon. This sort of exploit means that this is just really going to turn off big money. You can't put your money in a coin that's this easy to exploit and to hack and to take control of the network this is supposed to take 51% of the entire hash rate of the network and it took as little as 0.4% I mean that is just insane I would go as far to say that these kind of attacks that have been happening not just to Verge but to other coins out there will damage our chances of mass adoption we have to be able to show that our technology is solid this particular hack in hindsight seems so simple to just send incorrect timestamps and then be able to take control of the network for for, for hours at a time, it's insane. Nobody can say they didn't have enough time to implement changes to the code to prevent the second attack, and if not completely prevent it, but at least make it a lot more difficult. No real changes were made to the code base that had any real effect on how easy it was for hackers to take control of the network. The developer team behind Verge should have really, really been on that. As far as the, the rumors about copy and pasting, you know, it looks to me like it has been copied and pasted. You know, I know a load of you are gonna scream FUD. I don't want this taken as FUD, it's not. I do try and fact check as much as possible, which is why I put the code into a plagiarism checker. Now, if the code's out there and it's open source, then why not use it? I have no problems with the fact that he may have used somebody else's code. If it was suitable for to fix his issue, then go for it. But don't deny any knowledge of it. If you know you've taken it from somewhere else, give them credit. Say you've taken it from here. Code's out there. You don't need to recreate the same thing. Just use it. It's open source. But at the same time, tell people you've done it. Don't try and claim it as your own work. That's just not cool. As I said, you know this hasn't been an attempt at fun i've left this a long time after the exploit came out and that's because you know i do do a lot of research i spend a lot of time and effort pouring over reddit posts articles looking at code finding information i do encourage you all to check my research i will include research links in the description below because after all i am human i will make mistakes but hopefully i won't make them often so hopefully you don't hate me too much after that if you've enjoyed this video and the effort that i've put into it please smash the like button make sure you leave your your thoughts and comments below i would love to hear them if you've got anything that i should read leave a link i will check it out in the meantime if you want to see more of our videos make sure you click subscribe if you want to be notified when those videos are uploaded hit the bell icon and i will see you soon